We just want to hear what uh, Madame Lagarde has to say. Are there nuages sombre out there, dark clouds? Let's listen into her speech at Hong Kong University. Be a little bit more sensitive to changes. And uh, Hong Kongers are keenly aware that economic history never actually moves in a linear way, but moves in cycles. And they know that when the economy is moving, whether it's moving up or down, and I'm not here talking just about the stock market, policymakers cannot afford to stand still. And that is also the story of the global economy. The world at the moment is going through a really strong upswing. Now, I heard Professor Chen say that we were not in the spotlight, which doesn't mean to say that we don't have much to do. And I'll try to demonstrate that. But that upswing uh, actually holds the promise of higher income, better living standards. And delivering on that promise is actually critical, not just here in Asia, but around the world, particularly after what people have gone through in terms of financial crisis back 10 years ago. Now, we at the IMF have been calling on all governments to use the current growth momentum for much needed policy actions and reforms, particularly in the labor markets and in the service market. Now this is what I have borrowed from John Fitzgerald Kennedy when he said it's when the sun is shining that you actually want to fix the roof. And we very much believe that this is time to do so. These reforms that I've just mentioned are politically difficult but they are much easier to conduct and implement when there is growth momentum. Some governments have taken action, but much more needs to be done, and in many corners of the world. We believe that the window of opportunity is opened, but we also believe that there is new urgency because uncertainties have significantly increased. From trade tensions, frictions, to rising financial and fiscal risks, to more uncertain geopolitics. So how we can actually sustain that upswing in the face of these rising risks and how we can foster longer term growth that benefits all are the two key questions that I believe about 160 or so finance ministers and about as many central bank governors will be asking themselves and asking each other next week when they all gather in Washington DC for the spring meetings. And those are the issues that I would like to discuss with you today. So what I will do is very quickly broad brush the state of the global economy as we see it and as we forecast it, and then identify the three priorities which I believe can actually help with sustaining that upswing and creating a more solid longer term growth. So, as I said, at the moment, the sun is shining. We are clearly seeing a momentum that is driven by stronger investment, a rebound in trade, and favorable financial conditions. And all of that converging, converging actually drives companies and households to actually increase their spending. And that's the reason, you know, this nice momentum that we're seeing at the moment, which brings us almost back to the average that we had pre-financial crisis. That's the reason why back in January at the IMF, we forecasted growth in 2018 and 2019 at 3.9%. We will be publishing our latest uh, forecast in April, and you will see that we continue to be uh, optimistic. Now, where does that growth come from? Advanced economies are expected to grow above their medium-term potential this year and next. If you look at Europe, for instance, the upswing is now more widely spread across the whole region. The United States is already at full employment and growth will likely accelerate further due to expansionary fiscal policy. Here in Asia, the outlook remains bright. And if we look at only emerging Asia, we are forecasting growth at about 6.5%.
And that is good, not just for Asia or emerging Asia, which is the number that I just gave you. It's good for the entire world, because Asia is actually fueling almost two-thirds of that 3.9% growth. Japan's economy continued to grow strongly. We see it at about 1.2%. And Asian emerging markets, led by China, 6.6%, India, 7.4%, are driven by higher domestic consumption and also rising exports. This is the bright side of things. We have countries with challenges, particularly in emerging and low-income countries, especially in sub-Saharan Africa. They benefit from commodity uh, So that's Christine Lagarde. We're listening to her coming from the University of Hong Kong. She's made a number of comments. Uh, she talked about um, being optimistic on global growth, even as darker clouds are looming. Still watching? Perfect. Click here to watch another great video from CNBC International. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.